be in the water. I just had a lovely swim. And as I was swimming, I was thinking about all of the water that comes from the rivers and streams and flows into the sea. So water coming from the whole catchment area. And we think a lot about why we need to keep that water clean for the animals and biodiversity that live in the rivers and in the sea. But it's also really important for us, especially if you want to go swimming or bodyboarding or surfing in the ocean. We're so lucky in Ireland to have so many blue flag and green coast beaches. And when you see one of those flags, you know that the water quality is excellent because the county councils test the water around every two weeks and they check to make sure that there are no bogs, no bacteria and that it's safe to swim. So keep an eye out for the blue flag and the green coast flags when you go to the beach. I'm going to go get changed and go explore. Check out what I just found when I was walking along the sand. This is the exoskeleton of a type of urchin. So it's called a sea potato or a heart urchin and you can see why it gets the name heart urchin because it's in the shape of art <laughs> and this part of the animal so th this is a dead animal there's no there's no soft part of the animal left anymore this is the exoskeleton or the test so it's it's when you talk about urchins you don't talk about their shell you talk about their test and you'll notice on it as well um can you see a distinctive shape kind of on the outside of the test you can see that it looks like a star and these animals are actually related to starfish so they're both types of echinoderm and you notice it's got kind of like the five arms that a, that a starfish would have. You rarely see these animals alive because they burrow into the sand and when they're alive they're covered in these uh, spines that kind of lie flat over the top of the animal so a lot of urchins that live in the rocks will have kind of spiky spines whereas the heart urchin or the sea potato has spines that are kind of flattened over its body. So they'll burrow into the sand like around 10 or 15 centimeters deep and they have a little bit of a space around them so it's yeah it's like they have like a little a little burrow and they'll reach these tube feet they're called they'll reach the tube feet up through the burrow to collect bits of food and then they'll feed through their mouth that's on the bottom. So keep an eye out for these sea potato tests when you're on the beach. When they wash up like this, it's, they're really delicate and they break really easily. But I think it's amazing to think of this kind of mysterious animal that lives under the sand out off the beach and that we never really get to see alive. When I was swimming earlier, I spotted some animals floating in the water, some really beautiful animals. I love watching them. The Irish name for them is Smuggler Rowan, which means seal slot. Now I know that doesn't sound very beautiful, <laughs> but I think they're really, really stunning animals. Do you know what I'm talking about? If you had guessed that I was talking about jellyfish, then very good. So jellyfish, you'll be familiar with seeing them in the water. You see this bell-shaped body and tentacles floating behind the animal. And they're one of the oldest types of animals on the planet. So they have been in the ocean for hundreds of millions of years. And even hundreds of millions of years before dinosaurs were on the planet. So a really, really old type of animal. Jellyfish have a whole other life that we don't know about. So we see them when they're floating in the water. And that part of their life, they're known as a medusa. So a single jellyfish, it's the medusa of the jellyfish, or medusae for, for more than one. But they have a whole other part of their life where they settle on a rock or on a hard surface underneath the water. And then they're known as what's called a polyp. So the polyps like cold water. And when the water's cold, kind of over the winter in Ireland, December time through to around March, they'll bud and the buds will break off and form first of all little plankton and then these will form into the baby jellyfish and those will grow into the medusa and that's what we're used to seeing when we swim in the water and when we see the jellyfish floating by. Jellyfish have a really simple body they have this bell-shaped body and the tentacles and they don't have a brain they don't have lungs they don't have a heart they use their tentacles 
to capture prey. So they've got stinging cells in their tentacles that they'll use because they're a predator. And so they'll catch their prey and they have an opening that's both their mouth and their bum. In actual fact, a lot of the species of jellyfish that we get in the water, a lot of the ones that we see really often, they're not going to sting you at all because the stinging cells that they have in their tentacles aren't really powerful enough for a human to feel it. For example, the really common moon jellyfish or common jellyfish, it's a jellyfish that you see quite often. It's got a transparent see-through body and then these usually purple or pink kind of circles. They don't really sting at all. So there are some species of jellyfish that you need to be careful of. For example, the lion's mane jellyfish is a type of jellyfish that's seen quite a lot. It washes up quite a lot on beaches on the east coast of Ireland. So it tends to come down from the north. It's a cold water species of jellyfish and it comes down from the north and into the Irish Sea. When we see jellyfish in the water or on the beach, you'll usually see a lot together. So you'll get what's called a jellyfish bloom. And the reason a lot of them come together is because they're not very good swimmers. So they just move with the currents. There are also some other really, really beautiful species of animal that we see in the water and along the coast. And that gets sometimes are confused as being jellyfish, but they're not, in fact, tr true jellyfish. So they're kind of related to them, but they are a different, from kind of a different family. And one of the ways that you'll know that they're not true jellyfish is that they don't have that distinctive bell shape with the tentacles. So they'll look a little bit different. So one of the quite famous species, I suppose, is the Portuguese man of war. And it's a species that can give quite a bad sting. So another one that you need to be careful of. They've got a really, really distinctive, amazing, really deep blue and sometimes purple pink coloring. And in actual fact, it's not a single animal. A Portuguese man of war is a colony of animals. So there's this colony kind of floating or attached to the bottom of the animal and it's got a gas filled bladder that blows it along in the wind. The different individuals in the colony will have a different job. So some of them will help to kind of steer the, the, the air bladder and, and control the direction. Others will be involved in feeding and then others are there for reproduction. So it's a really, really fascinating um, structure. You think that it's a single animal, but it's actually a lot of animals living together and working together. Another species that gets confused as a jellyfish, but is actually a colony of animals, is the by the wind sailor. They're made up of a flat disc with a sail on top of it. And so the sail helps the animal to move along with the wind. And then on the bottom side of the disc is actually where the animals are living. So this colony of hydroids or hydrozoans are living on the bottom of the disc. And the other thing that I love about by the wind sailors is their scientific name. So the species name for the by the wind sailor is Velella Velella, which I think is a really cool name to say. So when I was swimming earlier, I also spotted some comb jellies. These also get confused as being jellyfish, but they are a different type of animal. And they're a type of tinafore is the scientific name for them. And they're really, really beautiful. They've got these plates. So they've got eight plates in their body and then kind of a central opening. And along the plates, they have these kind of tiny little hairs. And if you watch them swimming, you'll notice sometimes that there's this beautiful multicolored kind of shimmering light down along the sides of their bodies. It's really, really stunning to watch. And this is caused by those hairs on the side of their bodies scattering the light and kind of creating a tiny little rainbow of colors. So poor jellyfish, they get a really bad reputation because humans get in their way and get stung. <laughs> So do be careful if there are any of the dangerous species around, but also enjoy looking at them because they're really, really beautiful animals. 
it's really amazing to see animals living even in the sand like these sand mason worms so these are a type of worm that bury into the sand and they use a slime to make a casing so they they have this slime and it the sand sticks on the outside of it and it forms this casing that the worm lives inside and the worms we can only see a little bit of them poking up above the sand here but they actually may be up to about 30 centimeters long so they can be quite long under under the sand and they're really cool at the top of their casing they have this kind of uh, almost like a fringe that sticks out and then the animal li will live inside the tube and at this end of it it will stick its tentacles into the water to feed and the, the fringe around the top of the tube also helps the animal to catch food so inside the tubing the worm is actually divided up its body is divided up into maybe even up to about 300 pieces so they're called a polychaete worm and then at the end like i said they've got these tentacles that they reach out into the water to use to co collect food these sand mason worms feed a lot on dead material so they're mostly detritivores that's the word that's used to describe an animal that feeds on on dead material so there'll be dead stuff floating past in the water and they'll use their tentacles to reach up and feed on it and they even feed on the poo of other animals it's kind of gross um, they also sometimes feed on plankton but mostly they're detritivores and so that tube also gives them protection because bigger animals like birds and even fish sometimes try to eat these worms so they can tuck their bodies back inside their tube if they're afraid of being eaten by something bigger. So these animals are living in this shallow water where the tide comes in and out on the beach but sand mason worms can actually live in really deep water up to about over 1500 meters so up to maybe about 1700 meters deep. So they're pretty cool when you see them first they look almost like some sort of plant but they're actually this worm that burrows into the sand and I think it's really clever that they have these adaptations these tentacles that they stick into the water because they don't move so they can't move around to capture food so they have to find a way to be clever so that they can uh, just filter the food out, out of the water when they spend their whole lives in one spot. Yeah. This is one of the things that I don't like finding at the beach. Dog poo. <laughs> people should really, really take, clean up after their dogs when they're at the beach because other people are walking and if there's poo on the sand and it goes in the water, it means people are swimming in dog poo. <laughs> and it's really not true. So please, please clean it off. So remember that one, Valella Valella. I just love saying it. <laughs>